Hello everyone and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Uh, in today's video we're going to be looking at caustics. Kinda. Like we're going to be combining two relatively lightweight effects into a, a kind of caustic result. Uh, which will sort of give the, the impression of uh, like walking around in the bottom of the ocean that kind of thing. And the way we're going to do that is just with this one simple caustics texture. Which just looks like this, so a little bit of like wavy watery effect. A bit like uh, just some softened out Voronoi noise. And an instance of my old colored fog uh, post-process material. Here are the here are the defaults here, and uh, we can check out the master material uh, here. I made a video about this. Uh, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. It is uh, essential watching for for this video, and you might find it useful for your own projects too. If you like the sort of fog effects from uh, games like Journey, uh, it's a is a good example. Anyway, I've just got a nice clean instance here, and we'll get onto that a little bit later. For now, all we're going to need to do is start building out our material. Now, uh, what do we mean by caustics? Uh, well, we mean the effect that liquid has on uh, light, uh, the way that light shines through uh, liquid. Now, we're not going to be playing with any volumetrics or any sort of light resistance formulas or anything that tricky today. We're just going to make a uh, light function and then some tricky fog effects to make our effect happen. And the only thing I've done to the scene here, uh, you can see my outliner here on the right, so you can see all of the, the assets that I've got. I'm just going to remove the light source. It'll say that it's referenced by the sky sphere. We know that because that's how it derives where the sun position is. We're just going to hit yes, and we can also delete the sky sphere if we really want to. We're not going to need it. So let's hop down here to our caustics texture. Let's right click it and create a new material. And yeah, we can just call this caustics underscore matte, and we'll open him up. Now it's going to automatically plug our texture into our base material node here. What we're going to want to do though is grab our material node and down in the material domain change this to light function. This is so that we can plug it into a light and the light is going to play, uh, is going to shine sort of with our, with our texture effects. And another aspect of how this is going to be achieved is, uh, well since we're going to be applying it to a, to a light, like with a light function, we could, I mean I've deleted it now, but we could have used the, uh, the directional light but they're fairly costly as they are anyway, and they get even more costly if you add a light function to them. So instead we'll just use a spotlight and we'll just make it follow the player around. So it has that sort of range around the player and it's not going to be that taxing on the engine. So we'll grab our texture here, I'll just move it out of the way. So since we turn this into a light function, all we have is emissive, which is going to be allowing a certain amount of light through on a zero to one range inside this uh, texture object. So let's uh, grab our absolute world position. Uh, where is it? World position. We're going to need the world position because we don't want the caustic effect like with the spotlight to move with the player. We want to give the impression that the effect is happening around the player without the light having to be there. A uh, little tricky to explain, but it'll become very apparent as we as we move on. So from our world position here, hold in D and click to get a divide. Then hit Control and W to duplicate that divide node. Let's make a little space here. We need to hold in S and click for a scalar parameter, which we will call UV scale. And we'll set this up to something fairly high, uh, something like 300. And we can plug this UV scale into the B of our divides and the world position into the A of our divides. Then out of these divide nodes, we want to get a component mask. So let's type in component mask and grab this. And like before, control W to duplicate it, hook it up to the, to the, uh, the other divide. And with our second one here, instead of R and G, we want to uncheck R and we want to check B. We want G and B in the second one. This is so that we can project our texture onto world axes so that uh, the UVs are bound to their position in the world. They're not going to move with the uh, the object that they're, that they're being rendered in. For another example of this, uh, it's the exact same material that I used in my VRP video with the surface scanner, that grid thing with the footprints on the floor. It's the, the exact same way that I did that, just a, a little, bit, little bit more cut down, a little bit more efficient. So let's hold an A and click to get an add and we'll add the results of these masks back to each other. And the next thing we want to do is get some motion in our texture. We want to make it all wibbly wobbly like uh, like water ripples would be. And the way that we'll do that is with a node called four way chaos. So if we right click here, we type in function. What we need is a material function call, which at first would just be an unspecified function. There is nothing there. So we come down here to the material function call where it says none. And we want to get, we want motion and we want to find four way chaos. There'll be a few here, there's some for the normals and that kind of thing. If you're not seeing uh, these nodes, these functions, drop down here to the view options and make sure that you have developer content and engine content uh, checked, maybe even plugin content as well, can't hurt. And they should they should appear there um, like, you, like you see here. 
So let's grab this uh, motion, this four way chaos, and we can plug our add into the coordinates here. So that we're handling the, the UVs of our four way chaos. Grab our texture sample, and now we're gonna right click this and convert it to a texture object. So we're not gonna be able to affect this directly anymore. We're just gonna be using our material function here and plug this into the T2D uh, input of our function call. While we're here, let's also hold an S and click another scalar, call this one speed, set it to uh, some positive value, something like one, and hook that up to the speed input. Lastly, we wanna change sort of the, the brightness, like how much of this effect is going to be showing through our light. And that's uh, very simple. We'll just get ourselves another scalar, just hold an S and click, call this one intensity, set it to something positive, we'll say two, hold an M and click for a multiply, and we'll just connect up our tree a little bit like that, and the result of our multiply is straight into emissive color. And this wraps up our material. And as you can see here on the side, this is the result of the four-way chaos, and it's sort of minimizing stretching around the poles. Uh, there is still some stretching because it can't quite get those oblique angles in the world axes, but uh, the effect is, is looking quite good. So the next thing to do would be to jump back into our editor window. Let's go over here to place actors and we'll find ourselves a spotlight. Drag our spotlight into the world. Lift this up a little bit so we can see some of the light coming through. And we'll change some of these settings here first so that we can sort of see what we're doing. Um, intensity up to say 80. Attenuation radius, uh, go a little bit bigger than that, 1100. The inner cone angle, let's say 50 or 60. The outer cone angle, it's a little bit higher to soften out that outside edge. Um, and that should do. Now, if we come down here, find our light function drop down menu. Uh, let's right click our uh, material here, make an instance, and we'll drop that instance into our light function material. And there's nothing there. Did we remember to? All right, let's save our material first. <laughs> there we go. All right, so back in the editor, we have our uh, caustic light function effect. And we can open up our instance. Let's tear this off here so that we can see what we're doing. Drop down these guys so we can make the effect uh, more or less dense. We'll actually lower that down, or raise it up rather. Blow it up a little bit. I like it a bit more, a bit more blown out. Affect the speed as well. So we can change the speed, <laughs> get some crazy effects going on. And the intensity too, if we drop that down to zero, it's gonna vanish, uh, but we can raise it up and make it a much more pronounced effect if we wanted to. For now though, that is how we set up our, uh, our light. By the way, if you're seeing this preview here, uh, that means that you're working with preview lighting. Could be because our light here isn't set to, yeah, it's not set to movable. If I set this to movable, they'll disappear because it's a dynamic light. But if it's not a dynamic light, it's gonna show that preview, uh, that, that little preview message there, which if you're anything like me, it sort of bugs you. It, it sort of interrupts the way that the scene looks, but there is a there's a way around that. So if we get it to, where are we? If we get the engine content, we'll type in preview. We have our preview shadow indicator texture, which is, li is literally just exactly what you see. It's the word preview on a black background. And all you would have to do, and I mean, I would caution against mucking about with engine files, but if you just re-imported this as just a straight black image, then it'd be totally fine. Or better yet, you can come up here into the, into the actual material, which generates your shadows for you, and you can just change that to a black to a black feature, the square, if you wanted to. Just thought I'd slip that in. Anyway, so we've got our spotlight ready to go. Now it's time to edit our player. So I'm gonna right click this, uh, get our edit menu, and we cut that out. If we get it to our world, uh, world settings, find our third person character, and we'll open up our third person character, head over to the viewport, and we see here the familiar sight of our beloved mannequin inside his little capsule cage with a spring arm and a camera. So if we grab our uh, little mesh here, we right click this, uh, why can't we paste? Can I paste in here? Well, that's a temperamental, uh, temperamental little thing, but that's all right. If we just uh, manually add a spotlight, just like that. And let's see. Let me just real quick set this guy up. So we'll put it up above up above our guy here. Let's see, somewhere up like that. And then we'll start setting our um, our uh, values. So it was what, 80 um, in intensity, or the candelas. 80, there we go, attenuation radius at 1100. Inner cone angle was 55, outer cone angle was 70, I think. Uh, maybe that's a bit high. We'll bring that down a little bit. 
somewhere around there. And that should be all that we need to do except for our light function. So let's get our light function in. We want our instance, remember, not just the, the bare material. And then we'll compile that. Might even be able to see it. And save it, and then we can close our player there. And if we hit play, here we go. We have our caustic effect, and you can see as I'm moving around. So this is the advantage of the uh, the world position uh, section that we made out in our material, because as you can see, as I'm moving, it's not moving the texture with me. It's like the, like the texture is sort of on the ground, and, and we're just moving over the top of it. So it sort of smooths out that effect. In fact, I can show you what it looks like without doing that. If we just plugged in... Uh, let's say just the UV scale, I think, or actually we'll get a texture coordinates. I'll duplicate this with a multiply. Plug this into our coordinates for our four-way chaos. Hit save. And then if we hit play, uh, it might be set down a bit low. One second. Let's find our instance. Lower our UV scale down to something like that. So it looks a bit more familiar. There we go. But now you can see that the texture is moving with with the player. So this is the effect that we wanted to avoid. So by masking out certain angles and using the world position of the of the UVs, we can we can correct we can correct for this. So let's plug in our tree once more. There we go. I can delete these guys, save our material, and then back in our instance. I don't know what our value was. It was 100 and 150 something like that. We'll hit play. Uh, it's a little bit big. Uh, let's halve that again. Let's say 70. Oh, do I want to go the other way? Yeah, I'm going to go up the other way. <laughs> uh, try 300. Yeah, that'll, that'll do. At least for the purposes of the rest of the video, that will be fine. Okay, so we have our spotlight set up. Uh, it's looking pretty dark down here, but we can sort of enhance this effect. So, open up your Colored Fog instance. And we'll just come back over here to the editor. Oh, we also want to apply this as well. So go to our world outliner, find our post process volume, scroll down until you see. In fact, it's so much faster to search for it. Let's just search for uh, rendering features, post process materials. If there is an array currently with zero elements, just hit this little plus, the little drop down, change it to an asset reference, and then drag your colored fog onto where it says none. And there it will have applied the colored fog instance at least with the really dodgy defaults that I set way back when, when I made that original video. So let's correct that now. Uh, we'll sort of position ourselves down somewhere where the mannequin would, would be, somewhere like that. All right, so for Fog 1, we want sort of a murky, greeny, blue, somewhat gross in a way, Some, <laughs> something like that. We'll keep the alpha right up. Fog 2, uh, we'll also make some kind of off greeny, maybe a little bit more colorful, and the alpha will drop down to something like, I don't know, point, point 0.4, something like that. Very similar for Fog 3, uh, maybe a little bit of blue. It's a nice blue, landed on that first go. And we'll drop the alpha down as well, something like, I don't know, point 0.3, there we are, and our global fog. I don't know, we'll, um, Darken that down to, there we are, something like that. Let's see, we'll leave our values mostly default, I think, although. If we set this down, say 0 0.4. I don't know, I think it still looks a bit thick. Yeah, it's looking a little bit too thick, I think. Let's see what else we can do here. Let's try and lower some of these. Save that, hit play. Yeah, we're kind of getting there. Kind of getting there. We want to let's see, drop down our, our opacity even further. We're just tweaking, tweaking values at this point. Even the global fog, let's reduce that down some more. And our fog one, we can probably put back up. Maybe the overall, the overall effect can come back down a bit. 
Yeah, we're starting starting to get somewhere. I feel like maybe fog one needs to needs to be mostly cancelled out. There we go. We're starting to get somewhere now. Level fog. There we go. Might uh, leave it uh, leave it for your testing. Leave it for your personal uh, personal experimentation. Here is a, a nice caustic effect. In fact, let's brighten him up a bit more. Let's see intensity. Double that at least. Get some more light shining on the ground. And we can get this nice impression that there is sunlight coming down from above, like through through the water. And we can expand the spotlight if we wanted to expand the effect. We can also uh, thicken up the fog or loosen it down, depending on what you want to achieve. And uh, yeah, that's basically it, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this far. I hope uh, you've picked up something here. Special thanks to Jackson P, who uh, was initially the one that wanted to know about how to do a bottom of the ocean kind of uh, environment effect. And also to the several people on Discord, I am so sorry, I can't remember your names, who also asked about core sticks and about a water Ripley effect. In fact, something else that you could uh, also apply here would be... Uh, you bear with me for a sec. Let's jump back over to our post process. Um, actually, we want to go and find a classic video from underscore past heat haze. Uh, so we'll drop down asset reference, drop our heat haze on like that. So we'll open this material, make sure that it's completely fine and it's not. So the texture that we want, if I'm not mistaken, is orange peel. Save. Back to desktop. And now let's open this guy up. Oh, missed the parent. All right, so the parent is the heat haze material. PP heat haze, hit save. There we go. All right, now we got some real underwater gloopy gloop effects going on. All right, so I might have lied at the start. This is three, <laughs> three relatively lightweight effects uh, that you can use to achieve a bottom of the ocean uh, sort of aesthetic. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.